All right, this verdict has, I know, many of you and us asking so many legal questions about the former president's future, what is next for the campaign, his potential presidency. We now want to bring in Adam Ruther with Rosenberg, Martin Greenberg for more on this entire situation. Adam, good evening. Thank you so much for joining us. We know the verdict now. What is next in the legal process? So the former president is scheduled for the next step in the process, like every other defendant who's convicted of a crime, and that is sentencing. And he's been scheduled, it seems, in the normal course for about six weeks out for July 11th. So what will happen next is uh, two things. His defense team is very likely to file a motion for new trial, which is essentially like a miniature appeal, except instead of going to an appellate court, it goes to the judge who tried the case. And it argues various uh, uh, points, uh, uh, allegations that things may have gone wrong or been uh, incorrectly decided during the course of the trial. And it gives the judge the opportunity to provide a new trial right then and there. Uh, if that's not successful, then the case will move on to sentencing on July 11th. Okay, so we know this is unprecedented, this is historic, nothing like this has ever happened in American history. So how does it, does it, this verdict, impact Trump's run for the White House and his presidency if he is elected? Um, he will be a convicted felon if the appeal is not successful. What does, what does the Constitution say? Anything about this? Well, that, that's a very open question. Uh, scholars who are a lot more, uh, a lot better versed in, in this issue of the Constitution uh, than I am uh, have not been uh, able to really answer that question because it's never happened before. Uh, certainly, it poses some practical problems, but in terms of a, a specific legal bar, that seems to be an open question. And of course, guilty on all 34 counts, is it likely? Of course, this is unprecedented and uncharted waters as well. Is it likely the former president will serve jail time, given the fact that the judge has so many different options from actually sending him to, to, to jail or to prison, uh, a fine and a combination of that, as well as the possibility of being confined to his home? So if we if we look at the basic profile of the defendant and the crime here, we've got a first-time offender who's in his 70s, uh, who's convicted of a nonviolent offense uh, that doesn't carry a maximum penalty that's uh, a great deal of, of, of jail time by itself. Granted, there are a lot of charges here. There are a lot of counts of it. Um, and, and, and the overall circumstances of the case are also unusual. This is not a crime that's prosecuted very frequently. Uh, and his, pro his guidelines are probation to, uh, you know, to some smaller portion of, of incarceration. All of these things seem to suggest in any other circumstance that this would not be a very likely case for a judge to issue uh, an incarceration sentence. Obviously, the unusual part of this case is it, the ultimate goal, according to what the jury found, of uh, what the president did that was violative of New York statutes was to influence a national election and change the course of U.S. history. That part of it is really the wild card here, and we'll have to see what the judge finds important. All right, we're going to thank you for joining us, Adam. Before we go very quickly, we've all been following this trial. Were you surprised? 34 guilty counts? Uh, without knowing exactly what evidence was presented every single day, uh, I, I really ha tried to reserve judgment. Uh, the eccentricities of a specific case uh, are things that the jury has to hear, and those of us here in the cheap seats, it, it's very, very difficult, and we're all wise to reserve judgment and leave that for the jury. So I, I wasn't really surprised or not surprised. Okay, Adam Ruther, thank you so much as always for joining us.